So I started by masking uh, a few of the branches, especially in the foreground, and I masked the white little bit on the heads of the geese. And I also masked uh, their chest, where their chest um, was adjacent to the uh, river. So I used the neck of the geese as a passage for the color to go from the upper part to the river. I left the far bank dry to act as a barrier. So we have two resists here. We have the masking fluid and the dry paper. So I went over the top a second time with water. So that was good and wet. And here I go in with my Windsor lemon. And so it's very important to have your paints, uh, a puddle of paint ready to go right from the get-go. You can't stop. This is one of those deals where you have to just move really fast. So here I'm putting in a little reflection and you're thinking, oh my God, that color is too strong, but you have to be patient. And so here comes the cobalt. Now the masked uh, tops of some of the branches act as a dam. So I think I would do that differently next time. I think I'd interrupt the lines of the branches uh, so that the paint can get through. So I'm bringing this cobalt blue right down into the river. So see that bead of wet mixed paint on the far side of the, of the bank. So now I'm gonna start tilting the paper first one way and then back again. So I want my primaries to mix. And I'll use the spray bottle, the atomizer, to get things going. And here's a case where the spray, I eventually sprayed the dry bank on the other side. And uh, so I got some color where I didn't want it, but um, it may work out just fine anyway. So I go right over the geese as if they're not there. Because uh, the geese, the necks will be black. And uh, so it doesn't matter if there's color underneath. So I keep going back with more cobalt. So you could have a paper towel handy. So there again, the mask of the branches um, acts as a dam, and that was kind of annoying. So more blue. I ha kept having to go back to my palette. So uh, mix up a lot of blue. And it could be even a little thicker than heavy cream because the, the paper is so wet. So there's a nice warm color, kind of a golden color moving along there. See, that's where I wet the, uh, the far bank around near the geese's head next, so. So this is neat, I dropped in some of that red and it's flowing into the blue and it's not really making purple, it's just pushing the blue out of the way. So this is speeded up maybe about four times. So I, I was actually working pretty fast. So you see, even though the blue made a few courses down the paper, it's still, I still have that golden color on the right. So here comes the Payne's gray and the river is still wet. And I wanna leave some of the blue, I wanna suggest reflected light on the river. So that Payne's gray is pretty thick. 
because it always dries lighter. And here I was taking a synthetic brush that was just slightly wet. And I was trying to suggest some vertical reflections of, um, of light. Um, I was getting some blooms. So that might be something that should be done after it's dry. Okay, so I re-wet the paper. And um, so I took this palette that I dripped into to uh, mix up some neutrals. So I didn't, and I spritzed the paper besides wetting it. And um, so now I'm using my fan technique with the rigor brush to suggest the hills in the background and the trees that are, have very soft, tops to them. So it's, it's a dilute mix. And I'm going from warm to cool. And that's it. This is a, some brambles over on the right. So the paper was very wet on top. So that helps with the foggy atmosphere. Yes, I'm just doing more of the same here. So I like the top of that tree. All right, so now I'm gonna mix a warmer color over here where the light's golden. So that's the yellow and the red. And then I put the dark color over it. More darks. All right, so now I have my, I'm using my Payne's Gray with a synthetic brush that has a good tip and the paper's dry and I'm going in and I'm essentially just filling in this area uh, very carefully. So I'm moving very slowly actually. 